Hello and welcome to the Home and Learn video course for VisualBasic.net. I'm Kenny Carney and we're going to be continuing with string manipulation. This is the form you had from the previous lesson and I've just added a third button. So if you add one for yourself, mine says e -I -I -N -S -T -R slash contains and I've changed the name of the button, button in SDR. I've also added a text box, text box 3, and I've added some text to it, which was an email address for that. And if you double click a button to go to the code, I've already added some there. You can see what I've added at the top there in SDR, which is short for in string, in string. So it searches for one string inside another string something important there in string start searching at one not zero so let me give you some examples of this let me set up a variable we'll add an email variable that's my string and we had a position position Yes, I must needs to be an integer. I will get that text from the text box. Equals text three, wasn't it? Dot text. Right, so what can I do with this? First of all, I want the position. Right, uh, an equal sign, and then here it is in the string. INSDR, there's also an INSDR reverse. We'll just do this one now. And if I type a round bracket, you'll see there's one of two, one of two ways you can use it. String one as string, and two as string. And also start, string one, string two. I should do this one first. So what I want to search first one string one email that's where i'm that's the string i'm searching and the thing that i'm searching for between double quote there's an at sign no so i'm trying to you see if there's an at sign in the email address and for this position if it can't find an at sign in email it will return a value of zero otherwise it will return position of the at sign in the string. Let me add an if statement to show you how that works. So if position the value of zero then we can do something. Oh I'm going to the else part. Then I'll have a message box. Sure. Let me just say Oh, oops, that's some quote marks, don't I? Not here. Valid. Email address. No. That sign. Else. Oh, here we'll have another one. Message box. Stop sure. Double quotes. That's it. That sign. Um, at position and I can add that position at position right let's try that see what happens Google start the debugging now in string now see what message box I get at sign found a position six it starts counting at one remember one two three four five six there it is i delete it and not a valid email address no at sign so for the position um let's have a look also uh if you need a position you might want to check uh, um for example, if the at signs is at uh, the very beginning, so you could have or oh, position equals one, then it's not because that would mean you've got this. 
Okay, let's get rid of that one. And if I type it there, that is obviously not a valid email address. Not a valid email address. Okay, guys, delete it. Okay, not a valid email address. Stick it anywhere else. At sign found in position eight this time. So if you need to know one position, the position of one string inside another string, then you need a position variable, an integer, and then it will tell you which position it is at. Sometimes though you don't need to know uh, what the position is, you just need to know whether it's there. And you can use for this, there's something called contains for if email dot contains, where's it gone? Contains, then run brackets, and what you're searching for, which is that sign, then valid email. Valid email. Twice. Let me uh, comment some of this out. Mm. Okay. Email. That's yeah, alright. So if email contains an at sign, then do this. And if it doesn't, you could do that. obviously do something else. I haven't got that. No reference was exception was unhandled. So what went wrong there? Let me show you. Obviously, we need to get the email. Because the email was left as a back and blank string. Let me try that one again. Invalid email address. I could have had an else part there. I displayed another message box. So if it's that one, the contains. If you don't want to know the position, if you just want to know whether something contains a particular character, then you can use this uh, quite simple string uh, function. Now what I want you to do is go back to the form and add this button. Now I already added mine and pause the video. So substring, uh, text substring, and button substring. Double click to get it to create a code stub. And I've already created something down here. So we're doing substring, substring. And what this does is to grab one string from within another string. Grab one string from within another string. And substring, that starts counting from zero. So we're back to zeros again. And I've already set up two variables email string dot uk and I'm grabbing email address from the text box placing it into email what i want to do i want to check if the email address ends in dot uk i can use substring for this one so i place dot uk first and an equal sign so i want to search the email email string and then i type a dot and not some string substring now Retrieves substring from this instance. You see, there's one of two ways to use it. Start at index or length. What we're going to do first, I can just type in zero. What happens there? Start index. Not. I want an if statement. Dot yeah. uk equals dot uk and then another message box and then uk let me add an else part just to show you what it does and I'm going to put the variable dot com in dot uk or whatever. Right. And show you what it does. That's substring zero. 
substring. Click my substring. There's the email address it's trying to grab. The substring uh, with a zero between round brackets. It starts right at the beginning and it grabs the entire thing, the whole thing. If I replace this with uh, two, try it again. And it's chopped up the first two characters. Now it started grabbing from the NNY. That's the starting position too, and it's grabbing right to the end. However, you can do something like this. It takes it, uh, I'll take two there. Let me grab. Right, that was the start index. And the length, length as integer. This is how many characters you want to grab. Let's say we want to grab five. I'm starting at two. I want to grab five characters. String N N Y at sign hitch. So it started at two and one, two, three, four, five. It grabbed five characters. Yeah, well if I want to test whether it ends in dot u dot uk. This one, which is quite common, you have the length email dot that's something dot is it? Email dot length property. I want to do minus three. I want to grab three characters. So with this one, you want the length of email, which is the entire length of this string, and the minus three. So that is going to be the starting position. Entire length of the string minus three characters. So let's start at that position, and I want to grab three characters. Now yeah, let's see what happens. Bug. Again, and ends in UK. So we have a success. So it started here with the length of the entire string. And I said minus three, minus one, two, three. So it started there and it grabbed one, two, three characters. The dot UK. That's why this bit executed. Not that bit. Little word puzzle. Word puzzle for us to try. And we're going to use substring to solve it. So, write a name swapper. Swap the first two letters of Kenny with the first two letters of Carney. The new name will then be Canny Kearney. So I want to swap the C A of the last name with the K E of the first name. And likewise, the K E of the first name to C A of the last name. So, if you want to pause your video, and have a try at this one. Remember, just used substrate. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste some code over to here. All right, so let's see if your solution matched mine. Let's see, here is my code. Oh, I haven't done that one yet. I'll do that one in a moment. I'll do it now. Oh, oh. Right, I want that whole name in that text box. Xbox green text equals and I'll type in that symbol equals so we put whole name in the whole name. Now let's go through the code, see how it was solved. So first of all I set up two variables, first name, last name. Kenny into first name, Carney into last name. Now I've set up two rather long string variables. First two letters of first name, that's a string. First two letters of last name, also a string. And I've got a whole name variable there. So with the first two letters of the first name, you can use substring here. And we start at zero, and we've got two characters that will grab this Kenny, right? Kenny. And likewise for the last name substring zero two of the last name which is C A. So I've got K and E in here, and I've got C and the A in here. Now what can we do? So for whole name, I'll start off with the first name, first two letters of last name, the last name bit, 
And I want the first name. And again, I'm using substring. This time I've got a two. So if you re if uh, you remember from a little bit earlier when I typed a single character in there, and it means it will start at two in the string first name, and it will go all the way to the end and it will grab the rest of it. So it will grab there, start there, and it will grab that. I will place it in. It won't place it into there. It will add it to the first two letters of the last name. And I've got whole name equals whole name and first two letters of first name. And I'm doing exactly the same thing. And ampersand, join that to the last name substring. So again, it will start with two. It will start there and we'll grab all those. It will join it with the K and E. Let's see if it works. String canny canny, and then we go. Oh, we have solved that little puzzle. So we substring. It is quite hard to use the first, but um, it's quite a powerful tool for manipulating strings of text. So it's a good idea to get used to it. I will see you in the next video.